Oh, yeah. That'd be trying. I'm talking to Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, act like you're talking to Grandpa. There you go. That'll work. Act like you're talking. Everything you say, you're saying it to Grandpa. Look at me. See gray hair? Think Grandpa. i got to talk to him. Think about that old man that fell down everybody had to worry about. Okay. and welcome to Facebook Live from First Baptist West. We want to welcome all of you here and thank you for coming and joining us tonight. We're live from the offices here and we're also uh, sitting at Elizabeth's desk. So uh, uh, just in case you ever wonder where, where we are, we're at Elizabeth's desk, our receptionist, and she's always so gracious to uh, loan me her desk and let us uh, film from here. You see that she tries to sneak in some Texas stuff every now and then and uh, I try to hide it, but then we also throw in our Boomer Sooner stuff, so I think we're all going well. 
I hope you're doing well. Hope your week is going well. And we, I hope we have a good program. I, I think we do tonight. We're going to do some new things and uh, really excited about what we're doing. Our first guest tonight later on will be uh, Michaela Geis. She's going to be the first up for our senior spotlight. What we're doing this starting this week is every Wednesday night we're going to spotlight one of our graduating seniors since uh, their year has ended not in the way that they had hoped it would. So we're going to try to honor them and let you get to see and know a little bit about our graduating seniors. Also coming up here in just a little bit is Oliver and Jean Watson. Uh, they're members of our church but also they're leaders, one of our small groups. Uh, so we're going to be visiting with them here in just a little bit and have a great time seeing how things are going with them, uh, how they're enjoying their classes. But as always, we're going to start this thing off with three things you should know. John, let's get it going. All right, the first thing that, that you should know is that our M28 Ministries, we've been going well again with those. And we thank you for everyone that's uh, joined in to help us, providing food, uh, helping us cook. Uh, we even had people serving this week, and so we're really excited about that and report to you that uh, we had 212 people that we fed, 212 different meals uh, yesterday. That was down a little bit, but the day before they had well over 300, and so we're still looking for uh, that same number uh, every week. We're going to be preparing for 3 to 350. Now, one thing that I would like to ask you, uh, we have had great response of people coming in and bringing food and, and, and delivering it and all that. But we're also now looking for some people to maybe serve. This, this uh, week, yesterday, we had, I believe, five of our members were there serving because that's something that was really uh, desperately needed. But now we have someone that's going to be heading that up for us. So Jean Peterson has decided that she would like to maybe head that up for us as far as volunteers uh, to go serve uh, on Tuesday mornings from 11 to 1. So if you're interested in that, call the office. We'll get you uh, connected with Jean Peterson. and She's uh, so graciously volunteered uh, to help us do that. So the M28 Ministries, going well. Thank you First Baptist West people for uh, being so gracious in giving us uh, the things that we need for that. The second thing that I want you to know is again, this upcoming Sunday is Mother's Day. And so, as we always do, we try to have a baby dedication on Mother's Day. That's been our annual tradition. But because of the situation, we're not going to be able to do that this year. What we're doing is we're having what we call uh, the baby recognition. And so we're asking anybody that wants to recognize uh, through First Baptist West the, the baby that was born from Mother's Day last year until now, we're asking if you would to send us uh, three to four pictures of your baby but also a picture of the family. It can be just a on your phone snapshot. We don't, we, we're fine with that. But send that to us and then on Mother's Day, we're going to have a baby recognition where we're gonna play a video. We're gonna recognize all the families who have been blessed uh, this past year at First Baptist West uh, with a newborn baby. And it's a, a very special time and we're looking forward to it. The number, the third thing that we want you should, that you should know is that if you'll remember some years back, we ended up having uh, a, 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 a loan that we took out to build the new section of our building. And that loan balance started out, and John, if you'll put that up on the screen, that our square foot campaign that we have, we, we took out a loan of $1,462,280. Now, the milestone that I've been talking to you about for all of these years is that we want to get rid of the one. We want to get wipe it out. We want to get under a million. So, John, show us what we have now. There you go. We got rid of the one, folks. Congratulations. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We're down. We're below a million. We're at 999,000. But, hey, you know what? We got rid of the one. That's the milestone we reached. We want to praise the Lord for what he has done for us. Uh, he is blessed our people to be able to give. He's blessed uh, our church with a heart of sacrifice. And listen, I, I want you to understand something. If you weren't a member here prior to us having this building, it, it's kind of hard to understand what we went through in the ministries that we were not able to accomplish because of that. But now, because of your faithfulness with the One Square Foot campaign of giving money toward paying off that debt, we have done great ministries that we never could have dreamed of in those five years. And so, praise God, uh, we, spent a, we spent a month, if you remember, praying and fasting on how we were going to uh, step forward in faith 
to build this section of the building. And, and praise God, we've, we've reached the milestone, and our next one is to, to just continue to get that number down. So thank you, church, for your, your faithfulness. And man, we're going to praise God together. We'll fire up the grill because I told you you could fix a meal for it. So you fire it up, buddy, because when we get ready to get together, we're going to celebrate. But our big celebration is coming when we get that thing down to zero. So, friends, that's three things that you should know about First Baptist West and through our church. Now, before Michaela comes on, I, I want to share a couple things with you. Uh, have you ever heard that old phrase that you know that you're getting old by how people react when you fall? Because if you fall and you're young, everybody laughs at you. If you fall when you're old, everybody comes running to you to make sure you're okay. Well, I found out today... This morning, as a matter of fact, how people are viewing me. I was out for my morning run this morning, and I was uh, running a, a little section down on another neighborhood from us. And uh, as I was making the turn, the, some of the city streets uh, is elevated just a little bit, and there's a quick drop off. And as I turned that corner and I planted my foot, I rolled my ankle really badly, and I fell. Now, of course, it didn't take me just a few seconds to get up, but across the street, unbeknownst to me, across the street were a couple of police officers from Lawton, and before I could get up and take the first step, they were coming over to me and saying, Sir, are you all right? Are you fine? Are, can we do something for you? And I kept trying to explain to them, No, I'm fine. I just need to walk it off. My knee's bleeding, but I'm okay. He kept saying, Sir, do I need to take you anywhere? I said, I, It finally dawned on me, they viewed me as an old fat man running down the street, and uh, they were really concerned about that old man running. I'm not a young man anymore, I guess, so I, I now see how people view me while I'm running. Hmm. Anyway, enough of that story. I do have a section that I want to do tonight. As you know, I don't do a lot of Facebooking, but every now and then I'll get on some. So what I've done to the, tonight... Uh, very quickly, so I want to show you some memes that I found that I thought were really funny about uh, this coronavirus. So John's going to put some of those up there, some of my favorite ones. Uh, this is how we uh, properly greet someone before and after the coronavirus. In 2019, we were able to shake hands, but now we give live long and prosper. That's as close as we're going to get. The next one that we had, uh, so we want to go ahead and pull that one up, is staying with the science fiction theme, is the pre-corona chokehold. Uh, Darth Vader can grab him by the neck, but now with the coronavirus, it's away from them. We're not even touching them to choke them. So I thought that was pretty good. Our next one, John, was uh, all of a sudden we've all become Sheldon. If you've watched anything about uh, uh, this show, you know that Sheldon was a germaphobe now. This is all we do. We're walking around spraying everybody. So uh, we're, we're fun. that was funny too. The next one, real quick, uh, me seeing hand soap shelves empty in stores wondering, why people haven't been washing their hands before now? <laughs> Why all of a sudden are we needing hand soap that we didn't need before this? Mm. The next one was, uh, let's, let's see who's nearly, uh, really behind the coronavirus when you pull off the Scooby-Doo and there you see it's the Charmin people. <laughs> That's why, yeah, it's kind of tricky there. Now, please also want you to remember, this is joking, okay, folks, don't get upset. And back in my day, there was so much toilet paper, people used it to literally string it up in trees of, of their enemies. You remember that? Toilet paper and toilet paper in somebody's house. So that was another one. Then the next one that we had was, everybody has been doing like this little piggy. Now, you remember what that little piggy did? That second little piggy? He stayed home. So, okay, just thought I'd need to explain that one to you. But, uh, okay. So the, the last one, though, that I wanted to share with you that I think is probably the funniest one I've had, <clears throat> and we didn't put it on the screen, but it, it, it read that, uh, said, imagine, uh, I was reading that people could say that we could now wear masks and gloves to Walmart. And it went on to say, imagine my shock, though, when I walked in and everybody else was still wearing clothes. All right, there you go. I thought that was pretty funny. So those are Facebook memes that we wanted to get to tonight. Hope uh, that you kind of enjoyed that. If you didn't, that's okay. We don't do them very often anyway, so you won't see them again for a while. But let's get on with our show. Uh, we're really honored tonight. We have a special segment that we're going to start doing now on Wednesday nights for the for the month. And uh, um, you got some family watching. Aww. All right. Yeah, they just said they're here. Ruth, Ruth, guys. Okay. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be spotlighting a, a senior from First Baptist West, a graduating senior, because as you know, their year ended in a way that, it, that they hadn't hoped for. They didn't get to enjoy some of the 
uh, finer things that, that seniors get to do. And so what we wanted to do tonight, because we don't get to have the banquet, we don't get to honor them in our worship services, we've decided, John and I talked about bringing our seniors here on the program. And the first one that we have tonight, we want to introduce to you, uh, it is Michaela Geis. And Michaela has so graciously been the first one. She agreed to be the <laughs> first senior that we're going to spotlight. So let's go ahead and bring her on. Uh, Michaela, it's good to have you here. Thanks for coming tonight. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Well, I hope you, I hope this will be a good experience for you. <laughs> I, I told Michaela earlier, I said, please don't worry about messing up because I promise you the chances of me messing up more than her, a million to one, that, that she's going to mess up more than me. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so anyway, so how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm doing well until I get on this show. <laughs> I, things die down pretty fast. <laughs> But uh, we're, we're glad to have you here, and, and we're sorry that your senior year didn't get to go quite like what I thought you probably thought it was going to do. But you're, you're graduating from where? Chattanooga. Chattanooga High School. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been going to Chattanooga? About six years now. Okay, six years. Now, at one point you were homeschooled, right? Yes, sir. Okay, now what, what was some of the differences of, from homeschool to, to going to regular uh, public schools? Well... When you're homeschooled, you have to, your classmates are your siblings, so that's a little different. <laughs> you get to be around your friends a lot more. And I like that, just being able to be around the people I like. Oh, oh, <laughs> Not my people siblings. You like? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I, I don't love mean. my siblings, yeah. but. We, we love our family. Sometimes we no exactly want to be around yeah, them all the time. Go, oh, well, there you go. That, that's good. So, so you, you, you go from. Uh, homeschool to public, uh, public school. school. Uh, you go Now you've gone through all of the high school there at Chattanooga, right? Yes, sir. Okay, well, good. So what, what were some things that you were involved in while you were at Chattanooga? Uh, I was involved in FFA. I, I did track <laughs> for one year, and then I also managed the girls' basketball team. Okay, all right. Now, I, I know one of the things that I remember when your family and you started coming to church, one of the first things I asked you was, do you play basketball? Now, I want you to understand <laughs> I didn't because you're tall. Was, I don't go to everybody and say, just because you're tall, you play basketball. But being a former girls' basketball coach, that's always on my mind when I meet a new girl. Hey, do you play basketball? Because I'm thinking... Everybody plays basketball, right? <laughs> but you, you were a manager. Now, one of the things that, that, that I do know is that you, were, you received your FFA degree just recently, mm -hmm. right? My state FFA degree. Yeah, and, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because if some people aren't really sure about what that is, that, that's a huge deal because I know the stuff that you have to go through to get an FFA degree. My mm -hmm. daughter was an FFA chapter uh, leader in, in, at Tipton, and so I know what they had to go through. What are some of the things that you did that, that worked toward getting that degree? Well, I was really involved in FFA and we, I did a lot of competitions. I didn't really do showing as much. Uh -huh. And one of the big things you have to do to get your, your degree is making a portfolio or a scrapbook okay. for it. So that took a little bit of time, <laughs> getting all the pictures of your SAEs, which is your um, supervised agriculture experiences, and your CDEs, which are the more competitive parts. So you bring all that together and put it in, basically just proof that you did what you say you did. Right. There you go. They wanted to make sure you did it. But that mm -hmm. takes a lot of work. I, I remember seeing students put those together, and, and it was Quite a, quite a chore to get those. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you go to all the state conventions and things like that? Yeah, I've been, well, I went, I've gone for the past two years and I haven't this year. And that's a big thing I missed, which. Right. It, I, the, that was supposed to be at the beginning of this month, so. Oh, okay, okay. So did you ever go to the national one as well? Did you, mm -hmm. you went to the I went, one? I went um, in November. Oh, okay. This past year. Okay. And I enjoyed it a lot. So this year, of course, not getting to go uh, probably was disappointing, I'm sure. And just, yeah, a little bit, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> sure, sure. So what, what are some things that you think that, that you've missed out on? As you look back and you think, boy, the year ended so quickly. Um, was there something that you looked th thought, man, if, I wish I could have this? What, what would be one or two of those things? I was really I was looking forward to the to state convention and just getting to go through all those lasts with my best friends, um, but I mean I'm not a very big ceremony person, so like graduation and all that wasn't really 
like forefront in my mind, but I was looking forward to doing that with all my friends. Right. Okay. Well, and have they, have they got any plans? Have they said anything about graduation? Are they going to try to do one or? The last I heard was that we were going to try and do something the 17th, which was the date that was originally planned, but I haven't heard anything since oh, okay. then, so I'm not really sure exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> right, right. Well, I really hope that you get to at least experience, and I, even though you're not a big pomp and circumstance person, <laughs> still being able to look back and say, you know, graduation was a good night, and, mm -hmm. and because you worked hard and you get to do it with your friends. I think... Well, even all those long years ago that I was uh, graduated high school, uh, I, I really, the graduation didn't seem, but I remember the stuff prior mm -hmm. and being there with my friends and watching them get go across the stage. That, that, that meant something. So I hope that you'll, you'll get to do that. So what are, what are some of your plans in the fall? Have you kind of thought what you're going to be doing? Well, I plan to go to OSU. <laughs> Looking at all this OU yeah, stuff. <laughs> I can still be proud of you. That's, that's, cool. that's cool. Yeah, I'm going to go to OSU. Um, the plan is to major in plant and soil science with a focus in plant biotechnology and improvement. So okay. hopefully I like that. Well, <laughs> well you, you know, they, they do get to change majors. Yeah. Right, <laughs> I know that by experience. Not my experience, but from my daughter's experiences. Mm -hmm. they, they have changed majors. So. Mm -hmm. Dads don't like to hear those <laughs> words. So, so what, what do you what do you hope to be able to do with that? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That, that's kind of a pending question oh, right now. Well, one cool thing about it, you've got some time to think about what you're mm -hmm. going to do with that. Uh, we do have some people saying go poke. So <laughs> going back or yeah, <laughs> comes up on that. So, um, so, so what what have you what have you kind of learned? from this whole experience of high school ending and maybe some of the disappointments. Um, what has God been showing you and your family as you go through these last couple of months? I learned patience. Okay. Lots of patience. Because <laughs> I've just been wanting to like, go, go, go. And then, no, you can't do that. So, and it, and you know, everything's kind of starting to lighten up a little bit. And okay. it's, you know, you just got to wait and be patient and be respectful to other people. Good. Okay. So. Well, I just want you to know that we're, we're proud of you. And we're honored that you and your family have joined coming over here. We hope that it's been a good experience for, for all of you. Uh, and we're, we're proud of you. We want to honor you. And normally we get to have a banquet. Uh, but because we're not going to get to do that. Um, what we're going to do, though, is we have a quick video, and I think I may have got John out of order here. Okay. Sorry about that, John. See, I told you I mess up all the time. <laughs> he wants to kill me, but he can't because I'm his pastor. So. Uh, but we, what we want to do is we want to watch a quick video of some of your pictures, and then we got a special presentation for you. Okay? John? to see some uh, of the video of some of the things that her parents sent in for us and so what, what did you think watching some of those 
Uh, my sister's a lot bigger now than when she was when she was a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. She's about my height now. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed well, that the other day. Yeah, and I know, well, I noticed y'all, y'all had posted, your mom had posted some pictures of y'all's group, of your family. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's been several weeks since, or a month or more, or more, probably almost two months since I've actually gotten to see any of you. And, I, and that was one of the things I did notice about Cheyenne. I thought, she, she grew. <laughs> She's grown, not grown quite a bit. She's, cause I knew she was getting close to your height. So I thought, wow, all right. <laughs> well, anyway, we appreciate you uh, letting us show that video. And actually, you didn't let us. Your parents sent yeah. us the pictures. I was like, so. where are these pictures from? <laughs> <laughs> well, they sent them to us. So if you're upset, then we'll talk to that on the way home. Because that's where we We didn't go spying on anybody. <laughs> but we're really proud of you. And we want to honor you. And we have, uh, John has gone out and gotten a gift for you. And so from First Baptist West and the youth group, we want to present that to you mm -hmm. and say congratulations and and we hope that things go well for you and that you get a good summer and then get ready to to hit osu <laughs> hard and enjoy your time there so thank you for coming tonight well, thank and i you. really appreciate it but before you go can i pray over you real quick mm -hmm. okay let's pray father in jesus name we come to you and and god we thank you for your love and your grace and god thank you for how you watch over us and even in times that don't go as we plan. Lord, you're still there. And I thank you for Michaela. I thank you for her family and for bringing them to First Baptist West so that we could have the honor of getting to be with them and know them and see them grow. And Lord, I, I thank you for Michaela and the sweet spirit that she continues to display when she's at our church, but Lord, also when she's around here and doing things. Lord, uh, what I also know she shows at school and, and everywhere she goes. And Father, I pray that you would just give her uh, courage, you'd give her strength and encouragement. And God, that you would show favor on the things that she has in front of her. And that God, whatever plans that are there, that God, you would go with her, you would lead her. And that God, you would protect her as she steps out into a new world in the fall. And God, I pray, I pray for Dallas and Rexanne, Lord, is um, it's never easy uh, watching one of your children uh, step out into a new world but lord give them encouragement as well and i thank you for the example that i know they have set for her and lord they've established a great foundation in their own lives but also through jesus christ for michaela and i pray father again blessings for her and all that she does from this point on and god we thank you for her and i thank you for getting to be her pastor and lord i look forward to years ahead of what you're what you're going to do um, for her and through her. And God, it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Kayla, thank you so much thank for you. coming on tonight. You're our first one. <laughs> and so uh, you set the bar pretty high for the other <laughs> graduating seniors that will be coming. But God bless you and we thank you. Thank and you. so just real quick before uh, Michaela and them leave, we're going to now step into a time of Bible study. And I've got a quick devotion that I share. I want to share with you just a scripture and a few thoughts. So we hope you'll enjoy our Bible study. Here we go. Hey, everybody. I hope that you're enjoying the program tonight. I want to thank you again for joining in with us. And, and I hope everything is going well and that you're enjoying everything. And looking forward to the rest of the program here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to take uh, this time to share uh, an encouraging scripture with you. And hopefully uh, some encouraging words as we continue to serve God together as First Baptist West and other churches uh, around our association state and even around the world. I want to read a verse of scriptures found in Isaiah chapter chapter 58. I'm going to start at verse 6 and we're reading down to verse 9. In verse 6 it says, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that your yoke break, uh, break free from your yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and what you bring to your house, the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked that you cover him and when not hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light shall break forth like the, the morning and your healing shall bring, uh, spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. What, what God was dealing with the people in Israel at this time is sometimes uh, the same thing that we might get caught up into ourselves. God had been asking, is this the fast that I've been asking? In other words, what he was saying was they had chosen as a people to fast. To be able to look outwardly and say, oh, look at us. We're fasting. We're doing all this. But yet then in verse 4, if we had gone back, it would have said that, God, but you weren't responding to us. You weren't listening to us. And so what God was trying to tell them here was this. 
You chose how you wanted to serve, and you went against the things that I wanted you to serve. So here's what I want us to look at a couple things, that they were doing things for themselves rather than for God. And if we're not careful as a church, we can sometimes, and even as Christians, begin to choose our way of serving God. And say, well, I, I, I want to go over here, God, so I will do this. So come over here. When God looks at us and says, but that's not the way I wanted you to serve. That's not what I wanted you to do. The second thing that he was talking to him about is that they were not going to those who are hurting. They were doing something more for themselves to be bringing attention to them rather than going out and doing what it was that God would want them to do, going to the hurting. He says, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And not to bring your, your house for the poor who cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourselves. And he says, to go out and be the light. So in other words, today, my friends, there is a lot of trouble going on in our nation. And God says, have I not called the church to go out and to help take care of people, to minister to people? As we say in our church that we love God, love people. And as a result, we want to see lives change. So what I want to encourage us to do is to remember that we are God's primary response to the needs of the world, the church, not the government. Directed. <laughs> no, I needed my files. I need my files. Sorry. Hey, everybody. I hope that you're enjoying the program tonight. I want to thank you again for joining in with us, and, and I hope everything is going well and that you're enjoying everything and looking forward to the rest of the program here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to take uh, this time to share uh, an encouraging scripture with you and hopefully uh, some encouraging words as we continue to serve God together as First Baptist West and other churches uh, around our association state and even around the world. I want to read a verse of scripture found in Isaiah chapter 58. I'm going to start at verse 6 and we're reading down to verse 9. In verse 6 it says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of the wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that your yoke break, uh, break free from your yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and what you bring to your house, the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light shall break forth like this, the morning and your healing shall bring, uh, spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. What, what God was dealing with the people in Israel at this time is sometimes uh, the same thing that we might get caught up into ourselves. God had been asking, is this the fast that I've been asking? In other words, what he was saying was they had chosen as a people to fast. To be able to look outwardly and say, oh, look at us. We're fasting. We're doing all this. But yet then in verse 4, if we had gone back, it would have said that, God, but you weren't responding to us. You weren't listening to us. And so what God was trying to tell them here was this. You chose how you wanted to serve. And you went against the things that I wanted you to serve. So here's what I want us to look at a couple things. That they were doing things for themselves rather than for God. And if we're not careful as a church, we can sometimes, and even as Christians, begin to choose our way of serving God and say, well, I, I, I want to go over here, God, so I will do this. So come over here. When God looks at us and says, but that's not the way I wanted you to serve. That's not what I wanted you to do. The second thing that he was talking to him about is that they were not going to those who are hurting. They were doing something more for themselves to be bringing attention to them rather than going out and doing what it was that God would want them to do, going to the hurting. He says, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and not to bring your, your house for the poor who cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourselves? And he says, to go out and be the light. So in other words, today, my friends, there's a lot of trouble going on in our nation. And God says, have I not called the church to go out and to help take care of people, to minister to people? As we say in our church that we love God, love people, and as a result, we want to see lives change. So what I want to encourage us to do is to remember that we are God's primary response to the needs of the world, the church, not the government, not associations, but the church. We basically, my friend, are literally God's body. We are Christ's body today in Lawton, in the area where you may be serving. We're to go to those people. We are to be Christ to them. So let me encourage you that during these difficult days that we don't just sit back and pick out and choose how we want to do it, the easy ways or things that might draw attention to us, but that we can look and say, God, what do you want us to do? A man once wrote a book, said, where's God when it hurts? 
He later then posed the question, where's the church when it hurts? God is here. God is around. God is working. So I want to encourage the church to let God use us. Be his body. Be his hands. Be his feet. Be his eyes. Be his, be his mouth. Let's serve the people around us. And let's honor and glorify him through these times. As a matter of fact, Jesus even talked to the pe- group of people one time. When he said that when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me a drink. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. And they said, Lord, when did we do that? When did we see you this way? And he said, when you see the least of my brethren, that's what you are seeing in me. So let's today make a commitment that God will serve where you want us to serve. God will serve how you want us to serve. And we will minister to the people who are in desperately needing Jesus Christ. So let me encourage you with that, my friend. Continue to serve as God leads us to serve. I want to thank you again for listening and get ready because we're going to continue on with our program in just a second. But let me pray and then we'll switch back over. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your loving us. We thank you, God, for using us to reach people for, for, for Jesus. And God, we pray that as we, we serve in the church, that God, you would lead us to people. And Lord, let us see us making a difference in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we hope that you have enjoyed that that message, that little brief message of encouragement. And just remember, folks, we are God's body here. We are the body of Christ working. And it's not just as a collective group, but it is the things that we do. So uh, continue to be in prayer about how God is going to uh, use you throughout this time and even beyond. Well, I'm real excited because our next guests are, are uh, Oliver and Gene Watson. And man, I've been looking forward to having them come on. I've been missing these two. Uh, we visit a lot almost every Sunday. As soon as church is over, we stand and we visit for a long time, get good hugs and, and stuff. And, and we, we have practiced social distancing. We didn't do any hugging when y'all walked in. Uh, not that I was opposed to it, but I didn't want to offend anybody. <laughs> but uh, we're glad to have, thank y'all for coming in. I've been looking forward to seeing y'all. Our pleasure to be here. Well, good. And and I hope you're excited about coming. And, and again, it was just good to see you. And as I told exactly. you just a few moments ago, it was really good to have you here rather than talk exactly. to you over the, 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 the computer because now exactly. we get to actually be here. So exactly. you guys are really special and we're, we're glad to have you. So real quick, how, how has this affected y'all's lives, this quarantining and all that? Oh, in a lot of different ways. Work-wise for me, not so much. Uh-huh. Uh, more so for Jean. She has to wear... Full PPE. Oh, okay. All day. All day. Okay. All day. Uh, on the personal level, we were supposed to go on a major trip next Friday. Okay. Atlanta uh, was our first stop, and then off to South Carolina, uh-huh. and it's been scrubbed. Everything is closed. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, yes, yeah, so we have to postpone everything. So. Okay. So what have you been doing to make up for that? Do you got any other plans or just want to um, hang out? We, I'm looking at some shorter trips uh-huh. once places open up again. Uh, Texas is always close by. They have a lot of nice campgrounds. Maybe down to Houston again. Maybe Galveston Island, something like that. Okay. And then in the fall, don't know yet, but a big trip in the fall. Oh, okay. Well, very good. So you, you talk about your work. What, what do you do? I, I work at the Behavioral Health Center mm-hmm. on 82nd, and um, so the good and bad of it is that we don't have our doors open, as in they're locked, and we have to screen people okay. as they're uh, coming in, and we do that by phone at the front door. Um, so the bad thing is, is that I'm from, you know, my eyeballs down, um, completely covered and um, so I no longer see people coming in because we are currently not seeing our outpatients we're uh-huh. only speaking to them by phone oh, okay. um, so that's made a big change and for me who is I'm very outgoing and I love to see my patients it's really hard for me yeah. so um, I've found that 
our conversations over the phone when they call in for uh, medications or to make appointments or whatever it may be um, are a little longer because, um, you know, I've let people know I really miss them. And right. um, that though it's nice to hear their voice, it's definitely part of my job to really know that they're okay. And knowing that they're okay is more than just their voice. Right. Is really actually physically connecting or seeing their faces. Right. right. So it, it has been a little more difficult for me just in the fact that I'm really missing people. Yeah, right. So I, I'm, I'm well. Things are going well. We're, you know, moving along, but it's it, it saddens me some days that our right. doors are closed and we're not doing things the way that we have been. Right. But we're working mm -hmm. towards some normalcy. Right, right. You know, I think the same thing goes with me because I, I, I too, am a... a <laughs> person, people person. I love being around people. I love uh, visiting in. So it, it, that's one of the difficult things that I've had even as a pastor is uh, not being able to make that contact with people yes. that I that I enjoy, not just that I, I know I want to give to people, but I, I literally enjoy. Mm -hmm. Just like when you guys walked in, normally we'd been hugging and <laughs> exactly. you know and all that, but we can't do that. So, uh, but, but you talked about the, the, the stuff that you have to wear. Yes. Does that cause even more of a division for you? Um, well, it's different because I have to, because I sit at the front desk, um, others have to only when they come to the door. Mm -hmm. So if they need to uh, come out front, they have to cover as well. Um, so it's for our safety as well as sure. the safety of anyone who comes. Um, it is it's not so much a division as it is to me honestly it's very it makes me think mm -hmm. it, it's something that honestly makes me think about going into the future right going into the next several months yeah i am much more aware of what's going on around us, um, being in healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm not clinical, but I work around that every day. Mm -hmm. So right. I'm much more aware of um, things I touch, things, you know, just in general. So hand washing to me is a lot more, um, right. you know, it, just in general the things that I think about. Whereas I may not have thought as much about it before, I'm much more aware now. Right. Even all of our doorknobs and door handles and, you know, right. things like that. Well, that, and that's the thing that even with us trying to open up and desiring to start back on uh, exactly. May 31st, it, I always encourage people to, to be patient and understand that it's far more than just saying, hey, we get to be in church. Absolutely. There's a whole lot of things that, that we're going to have to be thinking about. Well, and uh, you know I had cleaned here at one yes. point, um, so I, I do know. Right. I, it, it is a much bigger situation yeah. than people are aware of. Right. And, and and with that personal contact and with the things that we're talking about, that leads us really quickly into... Your, your, your small groups, as yes. you, you guys have taken over, we're <laughs> now are leading a, a one of our uh, young couples' right, uh, young couple. small yes. groups, right? Yes. Right. So now you, you guys, and I want to commend you, uh, that when we brought up the idea of doing a Zoom meeting, I'll be honest with you, I, 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 I was hoping that, that all of our teachers or some of our teachers would respond <laughs> positively to it. Uh, and you guys did. Y'all, y'all jumped right on it. You were ready to go, just like several of our others do. So, what were your thoughts when we promoted that idea to you? And you can be honest with me. I, I'm <laughs> Initially, I was a little apprehensive mm -hmm. because number one, I'm not good with technology, and number two. Yeah, that's that's not me. Okay, <laughs> that's not me. Right. 
I am the, I'm like you. I, I, I need that physical, I need the people to be there. That's the connection. Right. Is there a connection over the Zoom? Yes. But it's not the same thing. Right. Absolutely. So initially I was apprehensive and uh, the first session we had, we got kicked off a couple of times. Yes. Uh, our okay. 40 minutes were up and then we had to go back in. Then we were back in and somebody else got kicked off. So we were chasing each other over Zoom, but uh, we had figured it out. Then the church stepped in and we all became part of right. the same thing and made it a lot easier to stay connected. Right. Okay. Um, because I do it over my phone, mm -hmm. Zoom for some odd reason will not work on a Chromebook. You only get to see four people. Oh, okay. So so I'm slide. always <laughs> switching back and forth and sliding around so I see who's there, who's not right, there, who, right. you know. Uh, then there's a time delay a little bit and I may ask a question mm -hmm. and nobody responds. So I then keep going, but I keep forgetting about the time delay. Right, right, So we right. start talking over <laughs> each other, but we're working on that too. Yeah, I mean, right. we're, we're getting pretty good at it. Uh, the amazing thing is that we had people join us that never been with us. Okay, good. Um, which was a pleasant surprise. Uh -huh. We look at who all is there, we say, whoa, look who's here. Yeah. You know? um, that's, that's totally awesome. So we're getting used to it. And uh, Heather Murr, for example, she indicated she might be interested to keep doing it even when we're upstairs in the classroom. Right, right. For members that may not be able to attend, members that might be on vacation, right, or halfway out of the state. Sure. Rob Hornsby joins us every week from Tennessee. Oh, amen. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, he's been there every Sunday. Yes. Except for one. That's right. when he was on his way back from his anniversary. Yes. Okay. Um, so, the idea is that maybe we can set up a laptop or something, classroom upstairs, sure. and go on Zoom. Okay. Have everybody in class or everybody who feels safe enough to come to class, and then have members that wish to do so just pop in on Zoom. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's one of the things that, that, that we are looking at. And, and the cool thing that, that I've, and I've expressed this to other people, is how God has kind of taken something small that, that, that we had planned for a small thing, and He is turn it into something even bigger that now would be something that we can use past this time. Exactly. Uh, for example, even with our live stream that we started at the first of the year, you know, my plan was a little small thing to say, <laughs> okay, a few of our members who couldn't be here on Sunday could right. still join us. Right. And we were getting comments. People were very grateful and appreciative that we were doing it. Then all of a sudden, this thing strikes and what we were doing in my small vision, God turned into hundreds of people all over the place are now joining in on our worship service that never would have because before. God is never surprised exactly exactly so as, as we as we look at that uh, we, we talked about you know of course there's some disadvantages because you just right. can't have people there what, what's one big advantage that you see because we're now doing it that you see boy this is this has been really good families are involved. What's that? I mean, families, families are involved. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really sweet that they have their children there with them. We love oh, that. Okay. So they, they have them there they during Sunday the school? They have the kids there during Sunday okay. school. And, you know, if they have to get up and run after them, but they still have the audio on, to us, that's okay. Sure. A lot of them turn their audio off because they have the kids, but we don't mind that at all. Oh. We love that. I love we, right. I mean, that's what our class is about. Okay. We're family. I like that. That's something our I hadn't thought about. Class is I mean, about family. We love them. That is what we are supposed to be doing: is nurturing we, them. We we are quite a bit older. It's the young married <laughs> class, right? Some of those couples have been married longer than we have. Right. So we are the youngest married class up there. <laughs> so sometimes we feel like the parents and for the little ones, the grandparents. Mm -hmm. When we first started teaching the class, the important part for us was the personal relationship. Right, right. The Sunday school class, the material we talk about and the material we, we discuss and teach is awesome. 
but there is more to church than just the Sunday school class right. and the teaching. It comes down to, like you always point out, the relationships. Right, right. Forming those bonds, being there for each other, being supportive of each other, checking in on each other, just letting people know that you are part of this body. Yeah. Not a little pinky off on the side, but you are part of this body. Right. So we always keep stressing the relationships, the togetherness, the checking in on each other. That's that's very important for Amen. us. Well, I want to encourage you, because uh, you, you just mentioned something uh, a few moments ago about how uh, to some of these people, you're their, their parents and you're their grandparents to their kids. As a person who has been in ministry, uh, and uh, my my family didn't grow up next to our my parents or her parents, yeah. so we didn't have the run to grandma and grandpa, run to mom and dad. So what we found out through the church is that we had people that really meant something to us. Uh, uh, you know, Jess and Regina McDowell are two people. Y'all don't know them. Tyler has come to preach here. Um, Jess is kind of like my spiritual dad, but he also because we were away from our parent families all the time, Jess and Regina became like my, our moms and dads and became my daughter's grandparents. And they, so I want to, I want to commend you for that and, and let you know to a young family who maybe, and you have some military people that they're not near their family. Right. Exactly. That I, I want, I want to encourage you to count that as a great blessing and work hard for that connection because to those young families that aren't, that, they don't have grandma and grandpa around. Right. That's good for their kids to be able to look at somebody. Because my daughters still, Jess has passed away, but my daughters still look at Jess and Regina and, and as people that they were able to be with on regular basis, you know, that they would take them. So I want to commend y'all for that and thank you and ask you to keep that frame of mind going. So as we, as we move forward, what, what, do you, what do you see for your groups as, you, as we move from hopefully out of this into some sense of normal stuff. What are you hoping and wanting to see that you can do through your class that we as a church can, can join in and help you with? I would like to see our class to get a little bit more involved. Mm -hmm. um, we have several people who have signed up to be <clears throat> on the earth team or greeters. Uh -huh. Um, I would like to see our group to get more involved with some of the missions that we do. Okay. So I always encourage uh, people to sign up for stuff. Um, we have our uh, public service announcements where we always point out certain things that are going on within the church, what volunteers are needed for, uh, what donations are needed for the various projects that we're working on. And uh, overall, everybody has responded pretty well. Good, good. We have Heather Murrigan. Um, she has several ideas of what we can do. Um, a couple of them are major projects that have been postponed because of the virus all the way to October. Embrace Hope. Embrace mm -hmm. Hope. Right. Embrace and hope. that's a big community project, and we're hoping to get a lot of people involved with that. Um, that would be something Good. wonderful Amen. for all of us to be involved with, very much like the M28 Ministries. But right. this is something that a lot of people, they're going to need a lot of help. Good. Good. So that's definitely something for us to look forward to. Sure. Good. Good. Well, I know one of the things that this has done is it has thrown us into a ministry mindset more than I think what we've ever yeah, have absolutely. been uh, in just a few weeks I'm gonna be starting a, a series of messages called the immature church and if you know we talk about the immaturity is sometimes a negative what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at the uh, immaturity as a positive not getting strapped down into the same old things that we used to do but be young again feel young absolutely. again as a church and new things so that's exciting to hear that you you are you and your groups are already beginning to think forward like that. Well, I, we, we could visit here all night, man. I love you guys. But so before before we go, go I, I do want to ask, is there something that you would like to share that God is showing you through this that you would like to maybe encourage people with? And whoever wants to go first, you're more than, just jump right on there. Well, 
for me personally, um, those who know me know that I have an issue with control. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So uh, no. <laughs> yeah, sure you don't. <laughs> and um, no matter how much we try to control what's going on outside of us right now, right, um, we really have no control. Amen. But God has all the control. Amen. And nothing happens without God making it happen. Right. So I'm slowly learning to just let go. Because there's nothing I can do about it. God knew about this virus. God created the virus. God is going to take the virus away. When God is ready to right. take it away. I believe that the current situation has allowed us as individuals as well as a church to reflect. Amen. Yeah. Um, the world throughout its history has gone through pandemics, mm -hmm. wars, pestilence, all kinds of, of, of horrible things. And yet we came out at the other end. Okay. Amen. And we will come out of this one okay. Amen. Will we have to make some adjustments for the future? Yes. But change is not necessarily a bad thing. Change right. can be a positive thing. Right. And maybe this is a wake-up call to let us know, okay, people, it's time to make some changes. Right. Right. So patience is something I've learned. And no matter what happens, we as Christians have one thing that you always point out that other people don't have, and that is hope. Amen. We have hope. We have hope. You bet. And we will come out of this thing okay. Amen. Very good. Jean, you got something? I actually just a verse. That, okay. Good. Good. That actually is a verse that I used to write in my students' um, yearbooks. Mm -hmm. And it's 1 Corinthians 16, 13 through 14. And it uh, says, be on your guard, stand firm in the faith. Be courageous, be strong, but lastly, do everything in love. Amen. There you go. Good. Very Amen. good. Wow. That's some good stuff, man. Uh, I wish we had more time. Maybe we can hang out and visit a little bit later, but we're going to have to end the program Amen. anyway. But, but thank you guys for coming. Oh, what thank an inspiration you. you've been. And you. It's just good to see you. Good it's to good be to next it's, to it's you. And, and to I'm you. so looking forward to it. <laughs> The day we that we get too. to be worshiping we together. Too. And that day is coming, as but you said. We will come we out on this side. It is in God's time. Yes. And, and, and that's the thing that no matter what we say to anyone, this is in God's time. Amen. As is what happened. Amen. And, and God does time. great works. I mean, you started off this evening by pointing out certain numbers. Yes. Amen. Now, I don't know if you saw us, but we jumped up. Yeah, I was excited. Yeah, It yeah. is exciting. So God does exciting things. Yeah. Not just for us, but for the church. So Amen. what can go wrong? He's on our side. Nothing can go wrong. Amen. Who can Amen. defeat us? Amen. Who can defeat and who do we have to be afraid of? No. Nobody. Her. Yeah. <laughs> Other than our wives. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, if, to be the man. Thank you. No. <laughs> I am. I, yeah, I got to go home to a wife and two daughters, so I know I have no control. I, I tell everybody, I said, I haven't had a man card since 1985, man. So what are you talking about? So anyway, thank you all for coming. Thank Do you, you mind so if I pray much. over you all no. too as no, well? No, no, thank you. Before we close out here. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for allowing us to be together. I thank you. Uh, for Oliver and Jean and just what they mean to me and what I know they mean to the church and, and their, their class. And so, Father, I pray a favor upon them. I ask God that you continue to be an encouragement to them in their daily lives, in their marriage, and in their ministries. And, Father, I thank you for their willingness to lead their small group as they do. I pray, God, that you would continue uh, to draw their, clo their classes closer together and, Lord, that they could be focused on loving you and loving each other. But, Lord, also uh, be serving you. And so, Father, we thank you for all that you're teaching us and showing us. And, Father, as, as Oliver said, that you give us hope. That, Lord, even through this, we're going to come out and we're going to be okay. Because nothing can defeat us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. And so, Father, we claim that today. 
And God, we do pray for our church that we would continue to uh, seek you, that God, you would continue to show us ways to keep us in contact with each other. And Lord, we do look so forward to that day that we get to join together in worship and just praise you, Lord, as, as, a, as a body, not separated by airwaves, but Lord, that we can actually be in the building together. We look forward to that. And God, just continue to bless our leadership of our church, but also of our, of our city, our mayor, and, and, and our city manager. Father, we pray blessings for them, for our governor, for our president, for, for, our, for our Congress and Senate, that God, you would just somehow erase all the, the divisiveness, Father, and bring unity to them as they seek what is best for our nation. And God, we just thank you for the way that you love us and continue to guide us in our church. And I thank you for the staff that you've placed together at First Baptist West to just work together. Lord, I, I, they are a blessing to me, and they are a great help to me. And so, Father, I pray blessings for them. We love you, and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guys, Amen. thank you again for coming. Thank you so much for And us. we, we want to say thank you uh, for joining us tonight and hope that uh, you've enjoyed our program, we, even though with the little glitches we have, we're... We're definitely not perfect, but as I joke with everybody, this is free TV, amen? <laughs> uh, you didn't have to subscribe to get us. This is free, so you get kind of what you pay for. Now, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed it. I appreciate Kerry for being here, keeping this going here, and John for all that he does. Uh, we just want to encourage you that if you want to be a part of our small groups, we do have on our webpage. Uh, Gene and Oliver, will be. their name is on there and other classes. Pick one of those and join in. Uh, and, and on Sunday mornings. And we also want to encourage you to join in at 1045 for our live stream service. We have a great worship service planned for Mother's Day. Looking forward to some great things there. Uh, and then again, next week, we'll be right here. Uh, same time, same position, and hopefully doing a little better job. But anyway, God bless you. Thank you. And for one final note to all of you. Uh, I, I I know I still do need a haircut, and I'm, I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. Hey, God bless you. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Join us Sunday morning, all right? Good evening. Have a good evening.